Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to part 2 of the Speedmap 2020 Section 2 full walkthrough. I'm Fraz, I'm a Cambridge Medical student and in this video I'm going to show you guys my model solutions for this paper. But quickly before we get into the walkthrough, if you guys are studying the BMAT this year, make sure to check out sigmamed.co.uk for a BMAT course that has been created by two Cambridge University medical students who scored in the top 10%. The course teaches you guys how to ace sections 1, 2 and 3 of the BMAT and for the first 50 students it costs just £30 so make sure you guys check it out and without further ado let's jump right into this walkthrough. Okay so welcome to part 2 of the section 2 2020 full walkthrough. Let's start with question 10. The reaction between hydrogen and nitrogen in the presence of an iron catalyst is known as the Haber process. It is a reversible reaction. The energy profile for this reaction is shown. What is the energy change when one mole of ammonia is decompressed into its component elements? So in this case, if we're decompressing ammonia, we're going the opposite direction. So when we're producing two moles of ammonia, we're losing minus 92 kilojoules. So therefore, if we want to compress two moles of ammonia, we're going to get plus 92 kg, which is absorption. And since the question is asking us about one mole, all we have to do is half this. And therefore, we're going to absorb 46 kilojoules when we decompose ammonia into its component elements. So therefore, the correct answer option in this case is A. All right. Question number 11, then. A gold medal used in events such as the Olympic Games is made from a silver nickel alloy with a coating of gold silver alloy. The mass of the medal is 256 grams, of which 24 grams is the mass of the coating. The density of the silver nickel alloy is 10 grams per centimeter cube, and the density of the gold silver alloy is 16 grams per centimeter minus 3. What is the volume of the metal? So the mass of the metal is 256 grams. 24 grams equals coating and the density of the coating is 16 grams per cm minus 3. So density is mass over volume. So therefore 16 is equal to 24 over V. Volume is equal to 24 over 16 which is equal to 1.5 centimeters cubed. So 1.5 centimeters cubed is going to be the coating. However, we need to find the inner mass as you have it. And so what we can do again is we know 24 grams is the coating. So 256 minus 24 is 232 grams. So same formula. 10 grams per centimeter cubed is equal to 232 over 10 over sorry over mass divided by volume over volume so therefore volume is equal to 232 over 10 which is equal to 23.2 cm cubed so therefore the overall volume is these two numbers added together which is 24.7 cm cubed which is going to be in this case answer option d if you guys are sitting the beam at this year make sure you check out sigmamed.co.uk me and my friend Thomas are Cambridge University medical students who scored in the top 10% of the entire country when we sat the BMAT. I scored an 8.6 in section 2. We've put all the tips, all the techniques, all the content, everything you guys need to know to ace the BMAT into this course. And for the first 50 students, the course costs just £30. That's cheaper than one hour of tutoring. So if you guys are sitting the BMAT this year, make sure you check out sigmamed.co.uk right now. All right, so question number 12. Triangle PQR is equilateral with side lengths of 10 centimeters. PQR are points in the circumference of the circle with center A. Which one of the following is an expression in centimeters for the radius of the circle? So the radius of the circle is going to be easiest to find if we relate it to the triangle. So it's going to be this length. Let's call it R. What we can now do is we can drop a vertical from P to the midline Let's call it x. So we know this length is 5 centimeters. Since it's an equilateral triangle, 
This angle is going to be 60 degrees and same with the other large angles. And this little angle over here, since it's bisecting it, is going to be 30 degrees. So since this length is also a radius, we know that this angle over here is also going to be 30 degrees since the triangle is symmetrical and therefore this large angle over here is going to be 180 minus 30 minus 30 which is 120 degrees and therefore this little angle up here is going to be 180 minus 120 which is going to be equal to 60 degrees and now we have one side which is five centimeters, we have the radius and we have an angle. So what we can say is that sine of 60 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is five over R. So this is from Socatera, so Soc. So therefore, R is simply equal to five over sine 60 degrees, which is gonna be answer option D in this case. So in terms of what I've done here, I've basically modified the diagram to make things easier for myself and just notice the fact that triangle PQO is symmetrical and from there we just have a simple case of using Sokotoa. Right, question number 13 then. Several processes can change the proportion of gases in the atmosphere by adding or removing carbon dioxide or oxygen. Which row is correct? What adds carbon dioxide? Combustion? Yes. Anaerobic? Respiration in animals? No. Activity of decomposers? Yes. Aerobic respiration plants? Yes. Photosynthesis? No. Aerobic respiration in animals? Yes. So we can get rid of answer option B, we can get rid of answer option D. Removes carbon dioxide. Only thing that does this is photosynthesis. So we can get rid of answer option A, get rid of answer option F. Adds oxygen. Anaerobic respiration does not add oxygen. Photosynthesis does add oxygen. So therefore, we can get rid of answer option C. And without even looking at the last column, we know the correct answer option in this case is D. Okay, question number 14 then. Four metals are labeled R, T, X, and Z have the following characteristics. R fizzes when added to dilute hydrochloric acid. T is precipitated when R reacts with an aqueous solution of a compound of T. X is the only one of these metals that occurs naturally in Earth uncombined with other elements. Z is the only one of these metals manufactured commercially by electrolysis of one of its molten components, whereas R and T can be manufactured by heating their oxides with carbon. What is the order of reactivity of these metals from most to least reactive? So the first thing we can instantly tell is that since X is the only one that occurs naturally, uncombined with other elements, X is going to be the least reactive. So we want to look for the answer options where X is lost, and that's going to be answer options A, F, and G. Now between these, T is precipitated when R reacts with an aqueous solution of compound T. We therefore instantly know that R is more reactive than T, so we can get rid of answer option G. Now it's between A and F. So which one is more reactive, Z or is it R? R fizzes when it's added to dilute hydrochloric acid. Z is the only one of these metals manufactured commercially by electrolysis of one of its molten components, whereas R and T can be manufactured by heating their oxides with carbon. This electrolysis method of molten components, we need to use this because of how reactive Z is. So therefore, Z is going to be more reactive than both R and T, Therefore, the correct answer option in this case is answer option F, and we can get rid of A. Again, this is the type of question where it's basically testing your core knowledge of chemistry, GCSE, i.e. from the section 2 assume knowledge guide. Okay. 15 then. Thorium is an unstable nuclide that decays through a sequence of radioactive emissions to form a stable nuclide of lead. All of the emissions during the sequence are either alpha or beta particles, one of the intermediate nuclides reaches reached after four alpha and two beta decays is a nuclide of an element labeled X. What is the symbol of this, for this nuclide of X? So let's sort through this. 2, 3, 2, 90, TH is going to become X. And what's happened in this case? So two beta decays is two times zero minus one beta. And all this is going to do is add two to the proton number. 
whereas 4 times 4 to alpha is going to minus 16 from the mass number and minus 8 from the proton number. So therefore, overall, the change of the proton number is going to be minus 6 and minus 16 from the mass number. So element X is going to have 2, 1, 6 on top and 84 on the bottom. And the correct answer option, therefore, from what we have is C. Again, the way I've done this is just by knowing that an alpha particle is 4 to alpha, a beta particle is 0 minus 1 beta. So if you lose beta particles, you're gaining protons since a neutron is being converted into a proton and an electron. And overall, you're losing 16 of the mass number, losing 8 of the proton number, but gaining back 2. Therefore, overall, you lose 16 of the mass number and you lose only 6 of the proton number. Hence, it's on option C. Right, 16. The graphs of the following functions are drawn. Which two of the graphs do not intersect? So if we think about what these graphs look like, I'm going to do this by a sketch. It's probably going to be the easiest way. Y is equal to 2x minus 1. It's going to look something like this. It's going to intersect at minus 1, gradient of 2. So that's 1. 2, y is equal to 1 minus x squared. So this is the, going to be the graph of minus x squared translated upwards by 1. So what the graph is going to look like is this. So that's graph number 2. 3, y is equal to 1 minus x all squared. So if we think about 1 minus x all squared, at the point 0, the graph is going to be equal to 1. At the point 1, the graph is going to be equal to 0. So the graph is going to look something like this. And then 4, y is equal to 2 minus x, negative gradient intersect at 2. It's going to look something a bit like this. So from these answer options, what it looks like is that graphs 2 and 4 aren't going to intersect. The reason being is the graph of 1 minus x squared is, as you see, it's that inverse graph. And the graph of 2 minus x from the diagram, although it kind of looks like they are intersecting, from all the options we have, they seem to be the least likely to intersect without kind of dragging out the working too much. So therefore, since it's a DMAT, we have less than one minute per question. From this sketch, it looks most likely the graphs 2 and 4 do not intersect. And therefore, the correct answer option in this case is answer option E. Another way to just solve this, to, to find this out, is saying that 2 minus x is equal to 1 minus x squared. x squared subtract x plus 1 is equal to 0. And there is no way of factorizing this, nor solving it to get an answer, so they don't intersect. Okay. Question number 17, then. Six test tubes were set up. Two different solutions were added to each test tube, as shown in the table. The temperature pH and all concentrations were optimal. Which three mixtures would lead to the presence of amino acids in the test tube? Okay. Lipase and lipid, no. Lipase and boiled protein, no. It's going to be denatured protein, but not amino acids. Protease and lipase is going to be yes, because the lipase is an enzyme, which is equal to a protein. And so the protease is going to digest the lipase to lead to amino acids. And then for boiled protease and protein, no, but since the protease is boiled, it's going to be denatured, it won't do anything. Five protease and boiled protein, yep, because the protease will break down the boiled and denatured protein into amino acids. And six protease and protein, obviously it's going to break it down into amino acids. So therefore statements three, five, and six are correct, and the correct answer option is F. Important thing to remember here, and what most students would make a mistake on, is they'll forget that the lipase itself is a protein. So if you add a protease to a lipase, the protease is going to break down the lipase because it's going to break down the protein, which is lipase. Okay, 18 then. Propene is an alkene. The structural formula of propene is shown. A polymer can be made from propene. What is the correct structural formula of this polymer? So, first of all, with how we show polymers, we usually show it in this kind of structure here, where we have two carbons and then any off branches. 
The second thing to remember with how we show polymers is we're not going to show the double bond. So we can definitely get rid of the answer options with double bonds. Since to actually create the polymer, you have to lose the double bond. And overall, what this is going to become is C, C, H, H, bond coming out, bond coming out, C, H, 3, H, brackets, and remembering the N, they all have the N. So the one that matches the structure is answer option D. But it's pretty easy to tell in this case just because you know you shouldn't have the double bond, so it's only really between A and D. And of A and D, A has the wrong number of hydrogen atoms. With polymers, what you're doing is you're getting rid of the double bond, and you're essentially extending them outwards here. So yeah, the correct answer option for 18 is D. So thank you guys for watching part 2 of this 2020 section 2 for walkthrough. And if you guys are sitting with BMAT this year, be sure to check out sigmamad.co.uk for a BMAT course that does things differently. And make sure you're quick because for the first 50 students, the course is £30. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next walkthroughs.